Hey, it's Mark Edward Lewis, and welcome back to Cinema Sound Studio B. We're going to be talking about ducking today. It has nothing to do with animals or you know how much I hate ducks, but we're going to be doing auto ducking today in a very special way, not using a compressor, but using a multi band compressor and keying the multiband compressor so that only certain frequencies are ducked. And you're like, well, this is all so weird. Are we talking about air conditioning? What are we, what are we talking about? Keys, air conditioning? No. Keying has nothing to do with physical keys. It has to do with the ability to tell one particular plugin on a channel to do something based on audio coming from somewhere else. And you'll see how it works in a moment. But we want to be able to, you know, really focus in on certain frequencies that might be culprits instead of a whole frequency. For example, music is super wideband. Dialogue really isn't. So we don't really need to duck all of the frequencies of the music in order to get out of the way of the dialogue. What if we only could duck, what if we could duck a few frequencies in the music and let the rest of the frequencies live free while the dialogue is, you know, basically going on without any trouble? Wouldn't that be awesome? We can do that in multi-band compression using several plugins that are available from both Waves Audio and Isotope. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, we're here in Adobe Audition and we're going to be doing multi-band ducking, multi-band auto ducking, which is way better than single band ducking. In a single band situation, even using the ESP panel in Adobe Audition, the entire music channel is being ducked. And while that's you know certainly useful, you definitely lose some of the impact and certainly the immersion of the music and the emotional impact because the entire music channel is being dropped. And it's really unnecessary if you have the tools and the know-how because a human voice is a very narrow band compared to the full bandwidth nature of music. So really, there's only a few bands that we need to auto-duck. And what if we could do it and have it uh, update in real time. Wouldn't that be amazing? Well, the good friends of ours at Waves Audio have a six band, multi band compressor that we can side chain in Adobe Audition. In other words, we can put it on the music, but instead of having it listen to the music channel, it can listen to the dialogue channel. And that's super cool. So I'm just going to play for you a little bit of this here so you can get a feel for what we've got going on. Just come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important, and I still feel like there's so much more that we can um, we can actually explore with that. Um, with Harley Quinn, that was also uh, a lead that people really liked, but she was not. She was. So we want to have that razor's edge, where the dialogue is up there, really close with the music, without being you know blown away by the music. That's what we we don't want. That. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to put. I'm going to bring the mix window in here for a second, and now we're going to put the waves plug in on the music bus. So we're going to go VST3, Dynamics Waves. We're going to slide over to. Oh, wait, up to C6 sidechain stereo. Not the C6 regular, because then it won't have the sidechain capability, and all it will do is compress the music based on what the music is doing. We want to compress based on what the dialogue is doing. We'll go C6 sidechain stereo. Wa-bam. There it is. Now, you know in Adobe Audition when a, when a plugin is sidechain capable because it has this cool looking, uh, alien looking thing that's just there. And that's how we know for sure that this is able to do that. Sometimes a plugin will say that it's sidechain capable and not actually be, but in this case, we know for sure that it is. Great. So what we do, we click on it and we say uh, we want a stereo input. You can actually do a 5-1 input. When we do, we get that yellow signal, uh, which lets us know that Adobe Audition is ready to receive sidechain input, and it's updated its buses for us. We go to the dialogue channel, which is right here, and we say on one of the sends, go and send some the dialogue to the sidechain. And that sidechain showed up as soon as we plus the little bug-looking button and it turned yellow. So we'll go sidechain, cool, and now we'll double-click over here and notice that it's green. Once it turns green, then we know that it's going to get cool signal and do its work for us. All right. <clears throat> Let's just double-check that. Just sure. Just come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important. And I yep, sure enough, it's going over there. All right. So this is the C6 six-band 
multi-band compressor, and it's really complex, and I'm not going to get into all the things, the amazing things that this thing will do. But it's six band, but it defaults to sort of these four bands here that you can change their independent or their individual ranges that they alter by moving these little stick lines here, and that would allow us to have the bass frequencies being altered by this compressor here, the low mids, here, the high mids, here, and the high highs, the sibilants, here. But then you also have two other bell-type compressors that you can slide around, even though they look like they're the low lows and the high highs, but you can make them anything you want. Because the human voice has a lot of energy between 500 hertz and 5,000 hertz, we want to break that up as much as we can and use these two out, outside bands to be inside the high mid band and give us extra support and extra resolution in those frequencies. All right, so I've set these up so that this low band deals with the you know, low frequencies, if any at all. And in the voice, we can probably bring it up to about 130 hertz, especially since uh, she's a woman. Her low frequencies don't really start until about 150. We're going to drop this band somewhere here, and then the top band being able to deal with the sibilants by themselves. Now, these other two bands, as I slide them around, you can see they're independent of any of those bars. And we want to add them here. In fact, we'll make this sibilance even higher so that we have uh, more control. And we're going to make this band very narrow so that it sort of coalesces here with the highest band, um, but not too much. And then the lowest band, we're going to move around to make it a little bit more narrow. And now let's see, kind of like this. So now we actually have three bands within one where it's where, where it really matters most. So over here, these are the global commands that allow us to move all of these at once. We want the attack to be reasonably quick, but not too quick. So we're going to make them all 16 milliseconds. So they're nice and uniform. The release can be very slow. So we don't really hear that music ducking. We're going to make it half a second at 500 milliseconds and do that all together. And then we're going to, if we don't turn these onto external, they'll actually still be working on the channel in which they're instantiated, even though it's sidechain. So we want all of these bands to be on the external mode. Um, if you have really dynamic music, you can actually have some of them on internal and some of them on external. For example, if you had a lot of low frequencies that were banging on and you wanted to kind of contour those, you could leave that low, well, that's not the low one, this is the lowest, on itself and, you know, manage those low frequencies while the rest are being managed by the dialogue track, which is so useful. All right, so we're going to bring the threshold down. Oh, also, we need to make the range the same. We want this to be, might be minus four, make this minus 12. And the range tells us how far can the compressor pull down or boost the bands, and you can see it working here, uh, you know, pulling things, showing you in the purple there how far down it'll pull something. Cool. Now we're going to just hit play and see what we get. I'm going to move that out of the way so we can look at the edit window. Let's make a selection with the time tool. Men and women of all ages come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important, and I still feel like there's so much more that we can... Uh... Now we're going to bring the threshold down and watch the difference. Men and women of all ages come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important, and I still feel like there's so much more that we can um, we can actually explore with that. Um, with Harley Quinn, that was also a lead that people really liked, but she was not a, she was not a good role model. Now, notice as I brought the threshold down, and they're all coming down the same. You can also change them individually if you want a different effect. But as you bring that down, you notice that it's in real time managing the voice in the music, cutting it out, which is so amazing. While the low frequencies and the highest frequencies are pretty much remaining untouched, which allows more immersive quality of the music and more emotional response. Let's see what else we can do. Men and women of all ages come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important, and I still feel like there's so much more that we can um, we can actually explore with that. Um, with Harley Quinn, that was also a lead that people really liked, but she was not a, she was not a good role model. Um, I feel like there needs to be there needs to be maybe they talked about another film of Harley but it might show a little bit more of a change or her trying to f men and women of all ages come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important. And in this case, 
we have all these beautiful bands happening from within the vocal itself, we could in fact take those low frequencies and allow them to be used by the music itself because you know there's nothing really happening up there uh, or down there, I should say, in, in her voice to affect anything. So let's do that. Let's make this bass side um, be only uh, compressed by itself. And let's manage that. Men and women of all ages come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important, and I still feel like there's so much more that we can um, we can actually explore with that. Um, with Harley Quinn, that was also a lead that people really liked, but she was not a, she was not a good role model. Now the bass is being nicely contoured by itself, and the dialogue is being uh, helped by being ducked out of the music. So we could actually bring the overall level of the music now up. Let me just take this overall up, maybe even 3 dB. Men and women of all ages come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important, and I still feel like there's so much more that we can um, we can actually explore with that. Um, with Harley Quinn, that was also a lead that people really liked, but she was not a, she was not a good role model. And it's a beautiful way to create that razor edge of dialogue opposite music without losing too much of the emotion, but still being able to tell the story of the dialogue. Let's turn this off and remember what it was like before. Men and women of all ages come and watch and enjoy it. Uh, I say it's very important, and I still feel like there's so much more that we can um, we can actually and in fact for us to get the same kind of result we'd have to pull this really far down men and women of all ages come and watch and enjoy it uh, i say it's very important and i still feel like there's so much more that we can um we can actually explore with that um with harley quinn that was also uh, so it's a big difference to be able to have auto ducking at a frequency level makes a huge difference in your mix. So all of this cool voodoo is available to us via keying, busing, and multi-band compressors. Waves Audio also has multi-band limiters. I'm not sure that they're keying yet, and that's really unnecessary because your compressor, multi-band compressor, can do this just fine. And the ability to do basically an auto notch EQ, auto ducking, so amazing. The more bands you have, the better the result. If you're doing any kind of multi-band compression, uh, auto ducking, or anything like this, or keying, do come tell us about it and tell us about your experiences so that we can all benefit and I'll happily get any of your questions answered if I can. Until then, we'll see you in post. Oh, and by the way, come to the cinemasound.com forum and ask those questions. We'll see you in post.